A series of lessons in Raja Yoga by Yogi Ramacharaka. Lesson one. The I. In India, the candidates for initiation into the science of Raja Yoga, when they apply to the Yogi Masters for instruction, are given a series of lessons designed to enlighten them regarding the nature of the real self. and to instruct them in the secret knowledge whereby they may develop the consciousness and realization of the real i within them they are shown how they may cast aside the erroneous or imperfect knowledge regarding their real identity until the candidate masters this instruction or at least until the truth becomes fixed in his consciousness further instruction is denied to him for it is held that until he has awakened to a conscious realization of his actual identity he is not able to understand the source of his power and moreover is not able to feel within him the power of the will which power underlies the entire teachings of raja yoga the yogi masters are not satisfied if the candidate forms merely a clear intellectual conception of this actual identity but they insist that he must feel the truth of the same must become aware of the real self must enter into a consciousness in which the realization becomes a part of his everyday self in which the realizing consciousness becomes the prevailing idea in his mind around which his entire thoughts and actions revolve to some candidates this realization comes like a lightning flash the moment the attention is directed towards it while in other candidates they find it necessary to follow a rigorous course of training before they acquire the realization in consciousness the yogi masters teach that there are two degrees of this awakening consciousness of the real self the first which they call the consciousness of the i is the full consciousness of real existence that comes to the candidate and which causes him to know that he is a real entity having a life not depending upon the body life that will go on in spite of the destruction of the body real life in fact the second degree which they call the consciousness of the i am is the consciousness of one's identity with the universal life and his relationship to and in touchness with all life expressed and unexpressed these two degrees of consciousness come in time to all who seek the path to some it comes suddenly to others it dawns gradually to many it comes assisted by the exercises and practical work of raja yoga the first lesson of the yogi masters to the candidates leading up to the first degree above mentioned is as follows that the supreme intelligence of the universe the absolute has manifested the being that we call man the highest manifestation on this planet the absolute has manifested an infinitude of forms of life in the universe including distant worlds suns planets etc many of these forms being unknown to us on this planet and being impossible of and being impossible of conception by the mind of the ordinary man but these lessons have nothing to do with that part of the philosophy which deals with these myriad forms of life for our time will be taken up with the unfoldment in the mind of man of his true nature and power before man attempts to solve the secrets of the universe without he should master the universe within the kingdom of the self when he has accomplished this then he may and should go forth to gain the outer knowledge as a master demanding its secrets rather than as a slave begging from the crumbs from the table of knowledge the first knowledge for the candidate is the knowledge of the self man the highest manifestation of the absolute as far as this planet is concerned is a wonderfully organized being although the average man understands but little of his real nature he comprises within his physical mental and spiritual makeup both the highest and the lowest as we have shown in our previous lessons the 14 lessons and the advanced course in his bones he manifests all form in the form of mineral life in fact in his bones body and blood material substances actually exist 
द फिजिकल लाइफ ऑफ द बॉडी रिजेंबल्स द लाइफ ऑफ द प्लांट मेनी ऑफ द फिजिकल डिजायर्स एंड इमोशंस आर एकन टू दोज ऑफ द लोअर एनिमल्स एंड इन द अंडर इन द अंडर डेवलप्ड इन द अनडेवलप्ड मैन दीज डिजायर्स एंड इमोशंस प्री डोमिनेट एंड ओवर पावर द हायर नेचर विच लेटर इज स्केरसली इन एविडेंस देन मैन हैज अ सेट ऑफ मेंटल कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स दट आर हिज ओन and which are not possessed by the lower animals and in addition to the mental faculties common to all men or rather that are in evidence in a greater or lesser degree among all men there are still higher faculties latent within man which when manifested and expressed render man more than ordinary man the unfoldment of these latent faculties is possible to all who have reached the proper stage of development and the desire and hunger of the student for this instruction is caused by the pressure of these unfolding latent faculties crying to be born into consciousness then there is that wonderful thing the will which is but faintly understood by those ignorant of the yogi philosophy the power of the ego its birthright from the absolute but while these mental and physical things belong to man they are not the man himself before the man is able to master control and direct the things belonging to him his tools and instruments he must awaken to a realization of himself he must be able to distinguish between the i and the not i and this is the first task before the candidate that which is the real self of man is the divine spark sent forth from the sacred flame it is the child of the divine parent it is immortal eternal indestructible invincible it possesses within itself power wisdom and reality but like the infant that contains within itself the sometime man the mind of man is unaware of its latent and potential qualities and does not know itself as it awakens and unfolds into the knowledge of its real nature it manifests its qualities and realizes what the absolute has given it when the real self begins to awaken it sets aside from itself those things which are but appendages to it but which it in its half a half waking state had regarded as its self setting aside first this and then that it finally discards all of the not i leaving the real self free and delivered from its bondage to its appendages then it returns to the discarded appendages and makes use of them in considering the question what is the real self let us first stop to examine what man usually means when he says i the lower animals do not possess this i sense they are conscious of the outer world of their own desires and animal cravings and feelings but their consciousness has not reached the self conscious stage stage they are not able to think of themselves as separate entities and to reflect upon their thoughts they are not possessed of a consciousness they are not possessed of a consciousness of the divine spark the ego the real self the divine spark is hidden in the lower forms of life even in the lower forms of human life by many sheets that shut out its light but nevertheless it is there always it sleeps within the mind of the savage then as he unfolds it begins to throw out its light in you the candidate it is fighting hard to have its beam pierce beams pierce through the material coverings when the real self begins to arouse itself from its sleep its dreams vanish from it and it begins to see the world as it is and to recognize itself in reality and not as the distorted thing of its dreams the savage and barbarian are scarcely conscious of the i they are but a little above the animal in point of consciousness and their i is almost entirely a matter of the consciousness of the wants of the body the satisfaction of the appetites the gratification of the passions the securing of personal comfort the expression of lust savage power etc in the savage the lower part of the indistinct instinctive mind is the seat of the i if the savage could analyze his thoughts he would say that the i was the physical body 
द सेड बॉडी हैविंग सर्टन फीलिंग्स वॉन्ट्स एंड डिजायर्स द आई ऑफ सच ए मैन इज ए फिजिकल आई द बॉडी रिप्रेजेंटिंग इट्स फॉर्म एंड सब्सटेंस नॉट ओनली इज दिस ट्रू ऑफ द सैवेज बट इवन एमोंग सो कॉल्ड सिविलाइज मैन ऑफ टूडे वी फाइंड मेनी इन दिस स्टेज दे हैव डेवलप्ड पावर्स ऑफ थिंकिंग एंड रीजनिंग बट दे डू नॉट लिव इन देयर माइंड्स एज डू सम ऑफ देयर ब्रदर्स दे यूज देयर थिंकिंग पावर्स फॉर द ग्रेटिफिकेशन ऑफ देयर बॉडीली डिजायर्स एंड क्रेविंग्स एंड रियली लिव ऑन द प्लेन ऑफ द इनडिस्टिंगटिव माइंड सच ए पर्सन मे स्पीक ऑफ माई माइंड और माई सोल नॉट फ्रॉम ए हाई पॉइंट पोजिशन वेर ही लुक्स अपॉन दीज थिंग्स फ्रॉम द स्टैंड पॉइंट ऑफ ए मास्टर हु रियलाइज हिज रियल सेल्फ बट फ्रॉम बिलो फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ द मैन हु लिव्स ऑन द प्लेन ऑफ द इंस्टिंगटिव माइंड एंड हु सीज अबव हिमसेल्फ द हायर एट्रीब्यूट्स टू सच पीपल द बॉडी इज द आई देयर आई इज बाउंड अप विद द सेंसेस एंड दैट विच कम्स टू दैम थ्रू द सेंसेस ऑफ कोर्स ए मैन एडवांसेज इन कल्चर एंड सिविलाइजेशन his senses become educated and are satisfied only with more refined things while the less calculated man is perfectly satisfied with the more material and gross sense gratifications much that we call cultivation and culture is not but a cultivation of a more refined form of sense gratification instead of a real advance in consciousness and unfoldment it is true that the advanced student and master is possessed of highly developed senses often far surpassing those of the ordinary man but in such cases the senses have been cultivated under the mastery of the will and are made servants of the ego instead of things hindering the progress of the soul they are made servants instead of masters as man advances in the scale he begins to have a somewhat higher conception of the i he begins to use his mind and reason and he passes on to the mental plane his mind begins to manifest upon the plane of intellect he finds that there is something within him that is higher than the body he finds that his mind seems more real to him than does the physical part of him and in times of deep thought and study he is able almost to forget the existence of the body in this second stage man soon becomes perplexed he finds problems that demand an answer but as soon as he thinks he has answered them the problems present themselves in a new face and he is called upon to explain his explanation the mind even although not controlled and directed by the will has a wonderful range but nevertheless man finds himself traveling around and around in a circle and realizes that he is confronted continually by the unknown this disturbs him and the higher the stage of book learning he attains the more disturbed does he become the man of but little knowledge does not see the existence of many problems that force themselves before the attention of the man of more knowledge and demand an explanation from him the tortures of the man who has attained the mental growth that enables him to see the new problems and the impossibility of their answer cannot be imagined by one who has not advanced to that stage the man in this stage of consciousness thinks of his i as a mental thing having a lower companion the body he feels that he has advanced but yet his i does not give him the answer to the riddles and questions that perplex him and he becomes most unhappy such men often develop into pessimists and consider the whole of life as utterly evil disappointing a curse rather than a blessing pessimism belongs to this plane for neither the physical plane man nor the spiritual plane man have this curse of pessimism the former man has no such disquieting disquieting thoughts for he is almost entirely absorbed in gratifying his animal nature while the later man recognizes his mind as an instrument of himself rather than as himself and knows it to be imperfect in its present stage of growth he knows that he has in himself the key to all knowledge locked up in the ego and which the trained mind cultivated developed and guided by the awakened will may grasp as it unfolds knowing this the advanced man no longer despires and recognizing his real nature 
and his possibilities as he awakens into a consciousness of his powers and capabilities he laughs at the old despondent pessimistic ideas and discards them like a worn out garment man on the mental plane of consciousness is like a huge elephant who knows not his own strength he could break down barriers and assert himself over nearly any condition or environment but in his ignorance of his real condition and power he may be mastered by a puny driver or frightened by the rustling of a piece of paper when the candidate becomes an initiate when he passes from the purely mental plane on to the spiritual plane he realizes that the i the real self is something higher than either body or mind and that both of the latter may be used as tools and instruments by the ego or i this knowledge is not reached by purely intellectual reasoning although such efforts of the mind are often necessary to help in the unfoldment and the masters so use it the real knowledge however comes as a special form of consciousness the candidate becomes aware of the real i and this consciousness being attained he passes to the rank of the initiates when the initiate passes the second degree of consciousness and begins to grow into a realization of his fellow relation realization of his relationship to the whole when he begins to manifest the expansion of self then is he on the road to mastership In the present lesson we shall endeavor to point out to the candidate the methods of developing or increasing the realization of this i consciousness this first degree work we give the following exercises or development drills for the candidate to practice he will find that a careful and conscientious following of these directions will tend to unfold in him a sufficient degree of the i consciousness to enable him to enter into higher stages of development and power all that is necessary is for the candidate to feel within himself the dawn of the awakening consciousness or awareness of the real self the higher stages of the i consciousness come gradually for once on the path there is no retrogression or going backwards there may be pauses on the journey but there is no such thing as actually losing that which is once gained on the path this i consciousness even in its highest stages is but a preliminary step towards what is called illumination and which signifies the awakening of the initiate to a realization of his actual connection with and relation to the whole the full sight of the glory of the i is but a faint reflected glow of illumination the candidate once that he enters fully into the i consciousness becomes an initiate and the initiate who enters into the dawn of illumination takes his first step upon the road to mastery the initiation is the awakening of the soul to a knowledge of its real existence the illumination is the revelation of the real nature of the soul and of its relationship with the whole after the first dawn of the i consciousness has been attained the candidate is more able to grasp the means of developing the consciousness to a still higher degree he is more able to use the powers latent within him to control his own mental states to manifest a center of consciousness and influence that will radiate into the outer world which is always striving and hunting for such centers around which it may revolve man must master himself before he can hope to exert an influence beyond himself there is no royal road to unfoldment and power each step must be taken in turn and each candidate must take this step himself and by his own effort but he may and will be aided by the helping hand of the teachers who have traveled the path before him and who know just when that helping hand is needed to lift the candidate over the rough places we bid the candidate to pay strict attention to the following instruction as it is an it as it is all important do not slight any part of it for we are giving you only what is necessary and are stating it as briefly as possible pay attention and follow the instruction closely this lesson must be mastered before you progress and it must be practiced not only now 
but at any stages of but at many stages of the journey until full initiation and illumination is yours rules and exercises designed to aid the candidate in his initiation the first instruction along the line of initiation is designed to awaken the mind to a full realization and consciousness of the individuality of the i the candidate it is taught to relax his body and to calm his mind and to meditate upon the i until it is presented clearly and sharply before the consciousness we herewith give directions for producing the desired physical and mental condition in which meditation and concentration are more readily practiced this state of meditation will be referred to in subsequent exercises so the candidate is advised to acquaint himself thoroughly with it state of meditation if possible retire to a quiet place or room where you do not fear interruption so that your mind may feel secure and at rest of course the ideal condition cannot always be obtained in which case you must do the best you can the idea is that you should be able to abstract yourself so far as is possible from distracting impressions and you should be alone with yourself in communion with your real self it is well to place yourself in an easy chair or on a couch so that you may relax the muscles and free the tension of your nerves you should be able to let go all over allowing every muscle to become limp until a feeling of perfect peace and restful calm permeates every particle of your being rest the body and calm the mind this condition is best in the earlier stages of the practice although after the candidate has acquired a degree of mastery he will be able to obtain the physical relaxation and mental calm whenever and wherever he desires but he must guard against acquiring a dreamy way of going around wrapped in meditation when he should be attending to the affairs of life remember this the state of meditation should be entirely under the control of the will and should be entered into only deliberately and at the proper times the will must be master of this as well as of every other mental state the initiates are not day dreamers but men and women having full control of themselves and their moods the i consciousness while developed by meditation and consciousness soon becomes a fixed item of consciousness and does not have to be produced by meditation in time of trial doubt or trouble the consciousness may be brightened by an effort of the will without going into the state of meditation the realization of the i the candidate must first acquaint himself with the reality of the i before he will be able to learn its real nature this is the first step let the candidate place himself in the state of meditation as here to before described then let him concentrate his entire attention upon his individual self shutting out all thought of the outside world and other persons let him form in his mind the idea of himself as a real thing an actual being an individual entity a sun around which revolves the world he must see himself as the center around which the whole universe the whole world revolves let not a false modesty or sense of depreciation interfere with this idea for you are not denying the right of others to also consider themselves centers you are in fact a center of consciousness made so by the absolute and you are awakening to the fact until the ego recognizes itself as a center of thought influence and power it will not be able to manifest these qualities and in proportion as it recognizes its position as a center so will it be able to manifest its qualities it is not necessary that you should compare yourself with others or imagine yourself greater or higher than them in fact such comparisons are to be regretted and are unworthy of the advanced ego being a mark and indication of a lack of development rather than the reverse in the meditation simply ignore all considerations of the respective qualities of others and endeavor to realize the fact that you capital y o u are a great center of consciousness a center of power a center of influence a center of thought and that like the planets circling around the sun so does your world revolve around you capital y o u who are its center 
इट विल नॉट बी नेसेसरी फॉर यू टू आर्ग्यू ओवर आउट दिस मैटर और टू कन्विंस योर सेल्फ ऑफ इट्स ट्रूथ बाई इंटेलेक्चुअल रीजनिंग द नॉलेज डज नॉट कम इन दैट वे इट कम्स इन द शेप ऑफ ए रियलाइजेशन ऑफ द ट्रूथ ग्रेजुअली डॉनिंग अपॉन योर कॉन्शियसनेस थ्रू मेडिटेशन एंड कॉन्सेंट्रेशन कैरी दिस थाट ऑफ योर्स एज ए सेंटर ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस इन्फ्लुएंस पावर विथ यू फॉर इट इज एन ऑकल्ट ट्रूथ एंड इन द प्रपोर्शन दैट यू आर एबल टू रियलाइज इट सो विल बी योर एबिलिटी टू मैनिफेस्ट द क्वालिटीज नेम्ड टू बी कंटिन्यूड ओम नमः शिवाय